This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, we've packed a number of shows together to give you some highlights. I know you're going to enjoy the show. Thank you for being with us today. Our guest is Ronnie Elias. Thanks for being on the show, Ronnie. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I'm honored to have you on the show. Ronnie is the lead asset manager of Town Center Partners, LLC. He has worked in litigation cases reaching over $9.5 billion in recovery, has managed a portfolio of over $520 million in assets, has been published in multiple law review journals, including but not limited to the NYU and many more. He's a current officer of the Federal Bar Association, ADR Division and more. Ronnie, Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, give the listeners a little more about what your focus is and, and what, what your business actually is. Sure thing. We live in the very exciting world of litigation finance. So we help plaintiffs uh, nationwide and overseas. You know, the worst thing is to get sued and to deal with a lawsuit. So we step in, assist in funding that lawsuit. And if everything goes well, we recoup our initial investment plus a return. If uh, things don't go well, no harm, no foul. We funded that lawsuit and nothing is owed or, or due back. So we kind of try to assist the plaintiff in taking that financial burden and some of that stress off from a lawsuit. Wow. So who's your typical client? Our typical client, you know, predominantly right now, we're doing a ton of real estate litigation. It could be anything from, you know, some type of breach of contract. But uh, right now we've seen a major uptick um, in real estate litigation, which can be from partner disputes, insurance disputes, and, and sometimes even dealing with cities or counties, not either giving some type of permit so you can build what you need to or zoning issues. So uh, we kind of step in and give that, you know, financial firepower to get you across the hurdle. Hopefully. If somebody sued me for something or whatever, my partner sued me or anything to do in, in the business, I, I might contact you all maybe because I can't fund to pr protect myself or fight back. Is that right? You know, I'm going to hire you all to help fund that. Okay. We, we always, uh, we, yes, but uh, one caveat to that, we always just fund the plaintiff. So if someone is, is suing someone else, so okay. the, the plaintiff is the one who kind of was the, the party that supposedly got hurt and is now taking action against someone else. Th that is uh, who we fund. Uh, the other side is called kind of like defense funding. Right. Uh, we don't do any of that. We just kind of focus on assisting the plaintiff. Okay. Okay. So is there uh, an example maybe recently or, or uh, to help us understand a little better about, you know, when we would use somebody like yourself or when we would use your services, you know, maybe an example that's happened recently. Sure thing. Let's just say Jane Doe Apartments, um, this uh, small syndicator or apartment owner owns a apartment complex. Let's just call it, it's 200 units and a tenant is barbecuing and god forbid goes in tries to you know to grab a drink and next thing you know that complex is now caught on fire and god forbid by the time the fire department or the sprinkler system or whatever caught there's a substantial damage done to that one building so you know let's say 20 or 30 units now are taken out that's of course not only monthly income that has been taken out you know now you got to go take care of your tenants, you know, how are you going to replace them? Or, you know, are you going to try and move them somewhere else? There becomes a lot of logistical and financial issues that arise. So you reach out to your insurance carrier, let's just call them, you know, big insurance company and big insurance company might tell you, well, we don't think Jane Apartments, you guys did a good job of abiding by the rules of the policy or something that there now starts to become we don't think this is an insured event or yeah, it costs maybe a million dollars to fix this building. We're only going to give you 300,000, 500,000. Then you're like, Oh my gosh, what do I do? And then the next thing, the first of the month is rolling around and you know, the bank says, Hey, we want our monthly nut. And now issues arise. So we step in, assist Jane apartments, Jane Doe apartments to continue operation. And Jane Doe Apartments uh, starts their lawsuit against the insurance company to recoup the money that they need. And we've now created uh, 
that buffer where they can continue to operate, stay in business, not have to do a capital call and keep that uh, apartment complex up and running. So, you know, God forbid they don't have to fall into default or possible foreclosure and stuff like that. And then by us adding that time and that assistance, usually we've seen it nine times out of 10, a, some type of agreement is able to come out between you know, apartment owner slash syndicator and insurance carrier. Nice. Okay. Now that's a great example. I was thinking about, so, so you all are going to help fund that financial loss on a monthly basis as, as well, so we can keep operating. And then you're going to help fund, I, I guess, me to hire a lawyer so I can do something, exactly. to, you know, at least show the insurance company I'm serious here. Hey, you know, we did follow the rules or, or at least, uh, you know, try to fight that a little bit. Yeah. Cause Absolutely. That, Forget about the mental stress of now, you know, hey, what am I going to do to kind of take care of everybody, not including my investors, but my tenants and so forth? You know, where am I going to come up with this revenue that I've lost now? And, you know, if it burnt down building, there's not really much you can do with that. So we understand the issues. You know, we try to sympathize with our clients and, um, you know, we come in there and we want to help them out. And it's been our experience, you know, some, sometimes, you know, large litigants or insurance companies try to use time uh, as a weapon against real estate owners or just plaintiffs because, you know, time is, is becoming your enemy because every month that's going by, you're losing more and more money. And then you come to this realization, well, I'm in a real type spot. Do I take what they're putting on the table now, which is a substantial difference than what I really need? to get me back or what do I do? So we kind of just assist. And at the end of the day, the plaintiff and their lawyer, they're the captains of the ship. I mean, they decide, hey, is this a fair number to sell at or not? Or we want to go to trial? You know, once we cut the check, we become kind of your biggest cheerleader on the sideline, cheering you on to success, but we don't take any hands-on approach that is it's your case and you with counsel need to make whatever you think is the appropriate decision sure so how do owners find somebody like yourself if we're in that situation how, how do i know about your your type of business i mean uh, litigation finance is such a small you know we're there's not you know i would say hundreds of us we're a small group of course shameless plug but hey town center partners we're, we're you know they can always find us here in northern virginia and we fund nationwide but you know hey you could uh, do a google search you could talk to your lawyer uh, to your attorney see hey uh, i'm in this tough situation you know, do you know of any litigation funders and do your due diligence. We take things as, you know, we're not going to force you into anything. We try to be as open door policy with our clients. Hey, look, this is an expensive type of funding. If you have other options, hey, can you, can you go borrow from friends or family or, or, you know, get a bank loan. It keeps you from going bankrupt or having to call investors and say, there's been a fire and I also need a check. Right. right. If you really think about it, you know, someone is coming in and saying, listen, you're in a, in a very, let's just call it a bad situation. And, you know, we don't point fingers at anyone or anything. And our goal is we want to get you across this finish line. And if things go as we hope it'll go, there's a cost for doing that. And then, you know, you'll repay us for that. But you know what, if things don't go as we plan, no harm, no foul. We took on that financial loss while you, the client, would have had to take that financial loss on top of the loss of, you know, something being burnt down or whatever. But we try to help our clients as much as possible. Uh, you know, if you look at our tagline, our tagline is always, you know, our mission is justice. So uh, we're really trying to help folks that just don't have that adequate financial firepower kind of get across that finish line. Steve, welcome to the show. You have some skills that anyone that's listening right now I know needs to know about, and it's going to be an interesting discussion today, I know, just from your expertise and background. Uh, but give the listeners a little about your background uh, and what your focus is today just as your, your day-in, day-out job and, and people you're helping. I'm a tax attorney and the head of our law firm. Before I was a tax attorney, I was a CPA. So in addition to understanding the tax laws, I actually understand how they operate, the number crunching, and even the forms they go on. 
It's interesting to, you know, if you have an attorney that's also been a CPA, there's so much combined uh, skills there uh, that no doubt you can help with. And, and especially that now that you're a tax attorney. Well, you know, I mean, I'd love to just jump right in now because uh, I know you, you and I had a great conversation or, or you were just sharing so much with me before we even got started. Just about the new administration and some tax changes, things that potentially could be happening sooner than later and uh, things that the listeners I know need to know about and, and maybe some things they could be putting in place now. Uh, uh, so, uh, so maybe we're paying less taxes, right? Uh, so we're, we're trying to have that positive cash flow, right? Uh, and less taxes. So let's dive in there a little bit. Uh, could you just get us started on some of the tax changes that the new administration is, is looking to, to make and, and some things we should be thinking about as real estate professionals? Absolutely. First, President Biden wants to make massive changes to our laws, and a lot of them are going to affect real estate taxes. One of the things he wants to do in the estate tax area he wants to drop the current exemption down from $11.5 million to $1 million. What that means is an awful lot of people would then have a taxable estate. There's an awful lot of people that have less than $11.5 million, but more than one mil. President Biden also wants the estate tax rate to be about half. So think about it. Instead of giving your hard-earned property, the real property, to your loved ones, give half of it to the IRS. And you say, well, wait a minute, you know, real property isn't liquid. Do, do I chop off the, the top floor of the house and give it to the IRS? No, a lot of times people would be stuck selling the house because they didn't have the cash to pay the taxes. You don't want that. So there's a lot of things you can do. Right now, what we can do is set up an estate plan where you give the property away to your kids. So think about this. Suppose you say, well, you know what? I have a property and it's fully depreciated. And what I'd like to do is pass it on to my kids, but you don't want to get hit with the tax. So let's assume you gave it to them now while you have the $11.5 million exemption. There's no gift tax. There's no estate tax. And then you say, oh, okay, this is wonderful. I, I'm not have to give that half to the IRS. But then when somebody gives you something nice, you know, some people, instead of saying thank you, say, I want more. And there's more here. So, for example, if you were using this property in business, you say, well, you know what? Now I'm going to turn around and I'm going to lease it back from my kids. Then you get a tax deduction for using that property for business. The bottom line is, essentially, you get to write that property off twice. And your kids, grandkids, they're probably in a lower tax bracket. So with going ahead and using this property, everybody is benefiting because that same money is getting taxed less in the family. A lot of other things that want to happen. There's something called the step up in basis. President Biden wants to do away with that too. And here's what that is. Suppose grandpa bought a property when he was a young man for $10,000. And today their property is worth a mill. What happens is if grandpa would give you that property today while he's alive, then what happens is you'd say, well, all right, I'm going to sell it the next day. I have a capital gain of 990 and pay tax on that. But if grandpa gave that to you through his estate, he died and then he gave it to you. You have a step up in basis. So instead of your basis being grandpa's basis, it's the fair market value at date of death or alternative valuation date, let's just say date of death. So in my example, you sell the property the next day, the fair market value is a million. You say, okay, my step up in basis is a million. A million minus a million equals zero. I have no taxes to pay. That's wonderful. President Biden wants to do away with that. So if he gets his way, it would be as if you'd give it to him during lifetime. And here, what you have is a 990 capital gain. Oops, wait a minute. President Biden wants to do away with the preferential capital gains tax rate. So what happens here is you say, well, oh my God, I have to pay at ordinary income rates. That's tremendous taxes that we want to avoid. A lot of other things too. Suppose we have this situation. Suppose we have a couple that says, you know, they don't have any kids or they don't have anybody they want to leave the property to. Or some people, and even some very wealthy people believe that if you give anything to your loved ones, it'll ruin them. So you say, well, I don't want to ruin them, so I'm going to give it to charity. That's nice, but it doesn't get you any income tax benefits. 
So instead, you can do something called a charitable remainder trust, CRT. And what happens with the CRT, you say, okay, husband and wife will live in that house for the rest of their lives, however long that is, 30 years, 50 years, 100 years. But when the second one passes, the charity will get the property. So physically, everything is the same in, in both examples. The couple lives there until the second one passes and the charity gets the property. But the second way, when you set up the CRT, charitable remainder trust, an actuary comes in and does a valuation because there's a theoretical separation of the property into what you kept called the life estate and what you gave away called the remainder interest. Suppose the actuary determines that the amount you gave away, the remainder interest is worth 700,000. You get a $700,000 income tax deduction today, today. And you say, that's wonderful, Steve, but I don't have $700,000 worth of income. What's, what's gonna happen to me? You can carry it forward for five years. Tremendous benefits here. But suppose your, your kid comes up and says, you know, dad, I don't feel that getting the property would ruin me. And dad says, well, you know, son, but I really like to get the income tax deduction. Is there some way we could satisfy both of them? Yes. We could set up something called an ILIT, I-L-I-T, Irrevocable Life Insurance Trust. And what happens with that is you give the property away and there's important reasons for that. And what happens is remember under President Biden's proposals, our exemption would drop down from 11 and a half million to 1 million. The face, a lot of people don't know, the face value of a life insurance policy is an asset of the estate. Most people wouldn't want half of their insurance policy going to the IRS instead of their loved ones. So instead you give it away now while there's an exemption, so no gift taxes, no estate taxes. And then what happens is your kid gets the value of the property. So everybody's happy. Dad's happy because he got the big tax deduction. The kid is happy because he got the value of the house. The only one here that's unhappy is the IRS and that's okay with everybody, but it's legal and we can do that. There's other benefits too. Another benefit is when you give insurance, the beneficiary can do whatever they want with the money. With an ILIT, the insurance company isn't paying your beneficiary they're paying the trust and your trustee is doling the money out based on the trust instrument. You get to control things even after you've gone through your reward. And this works out well because a lot of people will come to me and say, Steve, they love their kids. They trust their kids with their lives. Their kids are wonderful. But God knows what their kids might marry. And dad says, look, if, if my kid marries some no good Nick, I don't want the no good Nick getting their claws into my money. So you set something up like this to keep it for your kids and out of the hands of the in-laws that might misuse it or might misuse your kid if you have a divorce and things go bad. There's so much that can be done here. Another thing I like to talk about is to me, the most beautiful words in the English language are positive cash flow with a tax loss. Now, I mean, what, what, could, what could be better than that? So you say, well, that's wonderful because Physically, at the end of the year, I've made a cash profit from my real property. But through different things like cost segregation, which I, I know you've talked about in other shows, and what cost segregation does for those listeners that haven't heard them yet, it can greatly accelerate your depreciation, time value of money. You'd much rather have the benefit now than many years from now. And another thing that happens is we say, well, okay, now I have a loss and, oh, my accountant said, I, I can't use that loss. That's a, a passive loss. And with the, the passive losses, I can't write them off against ordinary income. But there's an exception to that. And the exception to that is if you're a real estate professional. So what happens here is if you're married, only one of the spouses has to qualify. So suppose we have this situation. We have a brain surgeon that's married to a house husband. And she says to her husband, honey, you're going to start managing our properties. Now, if one of them qualifies, then what's going to happen is they can go ahead. It's an exception to the passive activity loss rules, Internal Revenue Code Section 469. And what happens is that you now get to take what would have been that passive loss that you couldn't write it off. 
and you can write it off against your ordinary income. What's ordinary income? Profits from a business, dividends, interest, wages. It's tremendous. So what happens is when you have these benefits, what you want to do is parlay them, tie them together. And there's a way to do that. And so much of this real estate is an area that's very favored by Congress, except President Biden wants to make an awful lot of changes that would really, really hurt the real estate investor. So the bottom line is, if you own real estate right now, you want to talk with your tax person and say, hey, wait a minute. If President Biden gets his way, that's going to really hurt me as a real estate investor. What can I still do now to protect myself? But also, there's a lot of benefits that most people don't know about. One of the most common things that people will say to me when I take a new client is, Steve, wow, this is tremendous. Is this all brand new? Because I never heard of this. And a lot of times, it's not. A lot of times what happens is when people get their taxes done, they go to somebody who just fills out the boxes and here you go, it adds up. And actually, personally, that's why I became a tax attorney. Because the day I set foot in law school as a student on day one, I already had a bachelor's and master's degree in accounting. I was already a CPA and I was doing taxes. But I went to law school because I knew I could do a lot more for a client as a tax attorney than I could as a CPA. And also, I wanted to be the guy would be creative and say, look, you can do this, this, and this. Not the guys, oh, well, you can't do that. You can't do that. There's so much you can do. Another thing I like to talk about is Delaware Statutory Trust. Sometimes a client will come to me and say this, you know, Steve, I'm tired of being a landlord. I don't want to go over there and fix the sink and get a call at three o'clock in the morning. I can't find my keys. And, you know, somebody doesn't have the rent money. I'm tired of that. So I want to get out of that property. I just don't want to pay the taxes. And I say, well, this is your lucky day. You can get into a Delaware statutory trust. And what a Delaware statutory trust is, essentially, you go to a financial institution of your choice. And essentially, it's like a mutual fund for real estate, but it qualifies for 1031. So what happens is you can get out of that property, not pay the taxes because you've done a 1031 exchange, and then you still have another benefit. A lot of times people will say, well, you know, I'm going to retire and I don't want to be by with me. I just want to sit on the beach and that's it. I can't really do that as a landlord because, you know, you got to watch the property or bad things happen to it. So instead you say, well, wait a minute. If I do the 1031, when I need some money, I'm going to have to cash out and then I'm paying a big tax. I can put the money in the bank or invest it in the stock market if I want to take the risk. But, you know, the real wealth, the major wealth in this country, in the world is real property, not stock. It's real property. And you say, but I don't want to pay the taxes and have all that other money sitting in the bank from the property. Delaware Statutory Trust is perfect because you have shares. So you only sell what you need. You only pay tax on that little bit. And the rest sits there and earns money and you have these benefits. So there's just so much you can do in the real estate area. That's why we even in our law firm, we even have a real estate department that handles all this. So we handle the real estate, we handle the taxes, and then all the stuff comes together. Same with the estate plan. We have an estate planning department in the firm. And you say, well, wait a minute, here's a way that we go ahead and put all this together and benefit. So what we wanna do is first of all, we wanna make you happy. And I'm real serious about that. Where, where I'm different from most financial guys, most financial guys figure up some financial plan. They say, this, this will save you the most taxes or, or whatever else but they don't consider the person's lifestyle what they want. And I can't begin to tell how many people will come to me. They went to somebody else. Somebody else did something. They say, Steve, I hate this. Can you get me out of it? And the answer sometimes is yes. And sometimes is no. <clears throat> but what happens is you say, well, okay, how do I put all this stuff to benefit me? And I could be representing twins. And what they want could be very, very different. So the first thing I ask people is, what do you want? What, what, what are your wishes, your desires, your hopes, your dreams? And then once I know that, I say, okay, if you want to do that, then here's the way we do it. And here's the way we take the maximum tax advantage. And what people miss in the tax system, <coughs> excuse me, is that everybody thinks of the tax system is extracting money from you. And that's one of the two purposes of the tax system, extracting money. But the other purpose is in a democracy, 
the government may want you to do things like buy a building, but they can't order you to buy a building. So how does the government get you to do something they want you to do, but they don't have any power to order you to do? They give you a tax incentive. They say, well, we'd like you to buy the building. Can't make you. We'd like you. So I'll tell you what, you buy the building and here's all the taxes you'll save. Now you say, wow, that's gotten very attractive for me. So what happens is that is why you look at Fortune 500 companies that make profits with billions in B, don't pay any taxes. If you think about it, think about your little corner grocery store, mom and pop. You know what? Mom and pop are paying more taxes than Apple. Can you imagine that? Mom and pop are writing a check to the IRS and Apple is not. So you have so much you can take advantage of in the tax law. And the real estate area is especially rich in this area. There, there's so very, very much. And that's why you know I like to talk about the real estate professional, to write off those losses, the cost seg, the time value of money, Delaware Statutory Trust. And then it's so very important to tie it with the person's lifestyle, not to mention their wishes. You tie the income taxes and you tie the estate planning all together and you get a big, wonderful package. So again, to me, the most important thing is just letting people know this exists. Because if you don't know it exists, you walk along, you say, you know, it's, it's, it's so unfair. I have to pay so many so much taxes. Do I make that check payable to again? And these are things that I've dedicated my professional career to and saying, hey, you know what? The big boys take advantage of this. The non-billionaires, the non-corporations can take advantage of them too. Thank you for being with us again today. I hope that you have learned a lot from the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you're telling your friends about the Real Estate Syndication Show and how they can also build wealth in real estate. You can also go to lifebridgecapital.com and start investing today.